Here's a sim on credit losses. On the exam, your client is going to be an investor and have a portfolio of available for sale debt securities. They purchase those securities and what's the problem? The problem is at year end, they're not worth as much as the cost of those securities. The available for sale debt securities have fallen in value below their amortized cost. If that happens, the investor must determine if the decline is the result of credit deterioration of the debt issuer, which would be based on entity specific factors. We'll call it a them problem. Or is the decline in value the result of other factors like general economic conditions, not entity specific? Now, the portion of the decline attributable to credit loss, the portion that's entity specific, that is recognized as a loss in net income. That means the income statement will have to absorb that loss. And a valuation allowance will be established for that amount. The valuation allowance is a contra account, contra to the available for sale debt security. Now, it all began with the original purchase of these debt securities. And since they're an asset, there would have been a debit to investment in available for sale debt securities at the time of purchase and a credit to cash. But the exam probably won't ask you for that entry because that's pretty basic. What you're going to have to know in terms of journal entries is at year end, if there's a credit loss, how to account for that loss. And it'll be a debit to credit loss expense on the income statement and a credit to allowance for credit loss on the balance sheet. That's the contra asset. And this entry here at the end of the year would only happen if there was a decline in value of the available for sale debt securities. And if a portion of that decline was attributable to entity specific factors. And of course the exam will have to come in with facts and tell you what the decline in value was based on. Was it based on entity specific factors? If so, then you're going to have to record a credit loss expense on the income statement, along with this allowance for credit loss on the balance sheet. But if not, if none of the decline in value was based on entity specific factors, if it was all based on general economic conditions, then you wouldn't have a credit loss expense on the income statement. Instead, the entry would be a debit to OCI, other comprehensive income, and a credit to fair value adjustment dash available for sale debt securities. And while this credit would still be a contra asset balance sheet account, the debit would not be an income statement account. It would be OCI, other comprehensive income, and the decline in value would not impact the income statement unless it was what? directly related to entity specific factors. Now on the exam, the decline in value will probably not be an all or nothing situation. They'll probably tell you that a certain percentage of the decline in value was entity specific and the rest was general economic conditions. And in that case, you're going to need both of these journal entries at year end because whatever was entity specific will be debited to the credit loss expense on the income statement and whatever is related to general market conditions will be debited to OCI and both entries will be needed if part of the decline was attributable to entity specific factors and the rest from general economic conditions. So that's what the SIM is going to be like where we're going to have a decline in value and it's going to be based on both entity specific as well as general economic conditions. Why do you need two entries? because the general rule for available for sale debt securities is when there is a decline in fair value, it normally goes to OCI, not the income statement. We don't put a decline in fair value of available for sale debt securities in the income statement. We typically put it in OCI. This is an exception though, when a portion of the decline is attributable to credit loss of the issuer. Here's the facts. At year end, Duncorp has a $200,000 available for sale debt security investment that was purchased below par. So 200,000 is the par, but it was purchased below par, which means it was purchased below 200,000 at a discount. 
and the unamortized discount at year end is 1886 and the investment had a fair value at year end of 197,000. Now for this journal entry, I tried to recreate what happened already. They have an investment in available for sale debt securities, 200,000 par, so we'll debit that. Why are we debiting? Because the investment in available for sale debt securities is an asset. Then they paid less than that, so the credit to cash will be for less than 200,000. And if the original discount was 1886, then they would have paid 198, 114, and the journal entry here shows that. They might not even ask you for this first journal entry, but it's good to know where these numbers came from because it allows you to anticipate what's next. Now, the first thing to notice is that the fair value at year end, 197,000, is below amortized cost of 198, 114. And since the fair value of 197 is below amortized cost, we have a decline in fair value, don't we? Yes, of a very important $1,114. So since we have available for sale debt securities that have declined in fair value, we need to determine how much of that 1114 decline is attributed to credit loss of the issuer, how much is a them problem, and how much of the decline is attributable to general market conditions. And the exam will come in at this point and tell us that. Question number one of the SIM, assume none of the 1114 is attributable to credit deterioration of the issuer. How much loss, if any, is recognized in Duncorp's current year income statement? So we know we have a decline, a loss of 1114. How much of that's going to Duncorp's current year income statement, assuming none of the decline is attributable to credit deterioration of whoever the issuer is? And the answer is zero, since none of the 1114 is attributable to credit deterioration of the issuer, all 1114 of decline is shown where? Other comprehensive income, OCI. None of the loss goes to the current year income statement. Okay, question two then would ask, prepare Duncorp's journal entry or entries for the decline in fair value, assuming none of the decline is attributable to credit deterioration of the issuer. And the answer would be a debit to unrealized loss OCI, 1114, and credit fair value adjustment dash available for sale debt securities. Both accounts are balance sheet accounts. The unrealized loss goes to OCI because that's the general rule for available for sale debt securities, not the income statement unless there's credit deterioration. And the facts specifically said that none of the decline is attributable to credit deterioration. All of the decline was general market conditions related. Therefore, the unrealized loss goes to OCI. And the credit to fair value adjustment dash available for sale debt securities, that's a contra asset. And what asset is that contra to? It's contra to the investment in available for sale debt securities. So far, We've had our decline in value, but it was all attributable to general market conditions. You could probably anticipate what's next. Let's go on. Same facts. At year end, Duncorp has a $200,000 debt security investment that was purchased below par. And at year end, the unamortized discount is 1886 and the investment has a fair value of 197000 Once again, the fair value at year end, 197 is below the amortized cost of 198, 114. There's that decline of 1114, and we need to determine how much of that 1114 decline is attributed to credit loss and how much is attributable to general market conditions. And here comes the exam to fill us in. Number three, assuming that 40% of the decline is attributable to credit deterioration of the issuer, prepare Duncorp's journal entry or entries for the decline in fair value. So in question number two, there was only one journal entry, but now in question number three, there's going to be two journal entries because we have a decline in fair value. We're going to have to hit the income statement for that amount, that percentage of the decline, and then the rest of it that's just general market conditions related will still be debited to OCI. We'll start number three by saying we have the amount of decline of 1114. We can just multiply by 40% since the exam told us that 40% of the decline 
is credit deterioration related. So that gives us $446, and that's the amount that's going to be debited to the credit loss expense account, and it's going to hit our income statement for the current year. So debit credit loss expense, 446, credit allowance for credit loss, 446, which is a balance sheet account, a contra asset. And what asset is that contra to? Of course, it's contra to the investment in debt securities account. The remaining 60% of the 1114 or $668, the amount that's not attributed to credit loss, but due to general market conditions, there's your debit to unrealized loss OCI and credit fair value adjustment dash available for sale debt security. By the time you get here, you've earned some valuable points already, but let's see where the SIM goes from here. Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference.